Welcome back to what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. Want to know what it's really like to be an entrepreneur? Well, you came to the right place. Whether you're already an entrepreneur or looking to start your journey tomorrow, or maybe just someone who needs a little extra motivation to get through the day, this is the perfect podcast for you. This is the place where you will learn exactly what it's like in the world of entrepreneurship and hear authentic stories of entrepreneurs grinding on each episode. My goal for this podcast is to help you realize that giving up is never an option. If you missed the last episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. Before I introduce my guest, I'll share another entrepreneurial story to inspire you all. I will now introduce the story of Alyssa Nabriga. She was number one on the list of inspiring entrepreneurs on the Forbes article I read, and I know you'll find a great value in it as well. Here are some highlights. In the article, she described a chronic health problem that began to take a major toll on her body. She felt a lot of anxiety that her dreams would never be a reality. This forced her to actually face her fears all at once. By doing so, she started seeing these amazing opportunities come her way and felt more at peace as she faced her hesitations. Instead of holding herself to such standards that caused an unhealthy state, she says she surrendered and grace opened up. She added that she feels more confident and is actually able to prosper through her insecurities as when she feels it, it's just gone in a matter of seconds if she just embraces it. She says that all within a week, both of her unfortunate health situations improved and she was asked to also partner with her dream company. She is now an international leadership coach at Alyssa Nobriga International and Alyssa Nobriga herself is the president and CEO. I'll end her right up with an amazing quote from her in we're scripting our own stories. How we interpret our life is up to us and affects the quality of our lives. So why not win it? So why not win our dream? Deb, what'd you like best about her story? You know, what really struck me is that she overcame her fears and followed her dream with enthusiasm. You know, we all go through things and it's easy to just give up, but she didn't. And she really got herself together, got herself up, pushed forward and really followed her dreams and it became a reality so kudos to her absolutely and the voice you just heard is the sound of today's guest her along with her husband stephen have built a dental practice from the ground up in the west end of new york city over time their work began to speak for itself where they began acquiring celebrity clientele and a jam-packed schedule each day the practice is open for business i'm excited to offer this unique perspective from the dental point of view a first for this show Allow me to please introduce Dr. Deb Glossman. Deb, thanks for coming on today. Oh, uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Deb, would you mind please previewing a little bit of your story before we hop in and then touch on what you're up to today? Sure. Uh, my story began when I was in high school, actually, and I was a dental assistant. My own dentist inspired me to be his assistant, and he really taught me so much about the operatory, about running a practice, about treating patients. And he really pushed me to go to the next level, which is becoming a dental hygienist. And the school for dental hygienists is two years. So I went to dental hygiene school and I was very young. I was maybe 16 and a half. I graduated high school very early. I skipped eighth grade. So for me, going to college at that young age, it was difficult because you were with students that were older and more mature, but I got through it. I became a dental hygienist, and then I worked in the field as a dental hygienist for two years. And then my dad inspired me to go to dental school because he said, you know, you're so young, you're like 19, and to say that you're done with college is um, really, it's, it would be a shame if you didn't go to that next level. So he pushed me to get my prerequisites for dental school, and then I went to NYU Dental School in New York City and um, went through my four years. And then after I graduated, I uh, worked for a uh, Dr. Davidoff, who was very, very prominent in cosmetic dentistry. So not only did I learn general dentistry, I also was exposed to cosmetic dentistry at very early age in my career. Absolutely. And I know about all your great work, and I'm excited to jump into the big five. Deb, on each episode, what I do is I ask my guests these five questions to help them learn exactly what it's like to be an entrepreneur. You ready to go? Sure. Great. Let's go. You may have touched on it a bit, but when did you realize that you weren't happy with what you were doing or you just needed a change to be a full-on entrepreneur that you believed in yourself that you could do it? 
you know, first off, when I was a dental hygienist, it was great. I was in the dental practice, I was treating patients, and I was exposed to all different types of dentistry. And when I saw the dentist practicing and how he would change somebody's life by changing their smile, that intrigued me. And my father pushing me into going back to school to become a dentist, that's the um, avenue that I took. Also, once I graduated and I got into my own private practice, I practiced with my husband, Dr. Stephen Glassman, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. I treated a lot of different patients from all walks of life. And what I really wanted to get into was cosmetic dentistry. But what was frustrating is, is that cosmetic dentistry, in order to do it, you need a lot of time with one patient, let's say three, four hours with one patient. And the way the schedule was going, I would have many patients throughout the day, and I just couldn't find that block of time to build the cosmetic part of the practice. So what I did was I chose Tuesdays, and what I did was I would schedule patients for cosmetic dentistry on Tuesdays, and every other day during the week, I would do general dentistry, fillings, root canals, posts, crowns, you know, basic dentistry. And... Um, on Tuesdays, I would do my cosmetic cases, and it would be full mouth rehab, it would be veneers, porcelain crowns, really changing somebody's whole smile, and in essence, changing their life. So it was so nice, and then I started off on Tuesdays, got busy on Tuesdays, and that spilled over to Wednesdays. And slowly but surely, my practice took a turn and became more cosmetic at the same time, doing general dentistry, of course, building the cosmetic end of the practice. Absolutely. What would you say one or two of the most difficult parts of being an entrepreneur are, Deb? I would say choosing the right team. You know, um, it's very important to um, be an excellent dentist, of course, but you have to have a good team around you. I'm lucky enough at this point in my career, I've been practicing dentistry for over 33 years. I've been in dentistry for over 45 years. So... Now I have a team with me that my dental assistants are with me for maybe 22 years. My hygienist is with me for 20 years. So we have really, really good people. We're like a family in the office. Patients know the staff for many years. And early on, that was the most frustrating part was I could be the best dentist in the world, but if I don't have a good team around me, it was, it was difficult. So that was definitely one of the... Um, one of the, that was definitely one of the most difficult parts of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, I, I hear that from only a select few people on the show this far. Have them choosing that as a difficult part because you're right, you can be the best in the world, but if you can't rely on your team, then what good is it? Right, and you know the other thing also with being an entrepreneur, you got to take risks. There's always risks give you a bigger reward, and you have to take risks and sometimes jump into situations and do the best you can, like. You know, push forward and just keep your eye, you know, on the ball and uh, just go forward. I love it. I know I'm learning that certainly almost everything I'm doing is a risk and a lot of it's been starting to pay some dividends, which is nice, but the work definitely has just begun. If you had to think, Deb, what would you say one of your greatest failures is? What did it teach you? Why is it sticking with you? I would say when Stephen and I got into doing um, an education center for dentists um, with all different phases of dentistry and it involved dentists all around the country. And the one thing that bothered me about it is that some of the dentists weren't as enthusiastic as we were. They weren't as, um, you know, forward thinkers. And you would, you need, like I said before, you need to surround yourself with people that are positive, that think like you that want to be better every single day and they want to look in the mirror and, you know, be positive, but also accept what you see in the mirror and then learn and push yourself forward. You know, we always have to learn every day. We have to learn and learning can never stop. And it was very frustrating for me to be around dentists that didn't want to learn. It just took the back seat and just, you know, went to work and came home, went to work and came home and didn't really enjoy what they were doing. We were so fortunate to enjoy what we do. It's like I wake up in the morning, I look forward to going to the practice. I don't look at it as work. I look at it really as fun. You know, you build relationships with your team, you build relationships with patients, you see changing people's lives by changing their smile. So it's really, you know, very rewarding for us. Absolutely. Everybody always says over time, You'll never consider it work if you truly love what you're doing and if you just 
love what you're doing, you'll find that success. And I'm starting to finally find that as I'm a full entrepreneur, kind of just believing in myself, taking those risks as you describe. And it's been an awesome ride so far. If you had to pick an entrepreneur, Deb, dead or alive, anywhere throughout history, who are we picking to pick their brain? What are you guys talking about? You know, that's a good question. I thought about that. And um, I would say I would go back and talk to the dentist that I first worked for, Dr. Earl Davidoff. He was a very successful, hardworking dentist. He had vision in cosmetic dentistry. He was the first dentist to do porcelain veneers and cosmetic dentistry. Wow. And I would love him to see with all the teachings that he taught me, I would love him to see where I am today. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for him. You know, so I would love to go back and pick his brain a little bit more and and keep learning from him. That's a great answer. I'll have to pick your brain here a second, though. You led me to it. What is something you're going to ask him? What's the first thing you want to ask him? How did he get into cosmetic dentistry and how did he become the first? How did he have the vision of changing dentistry by doing porcelain veneers? Before porcelain veneers, we would do bonding. And bonding was a restoration that was good. It would change the shape of someone's tooth, you know, change the shape of someone's smile, the color, but it wouldn't really look as real as natural teeth. Then when we got into porcelain, he introduced it to dentistry. You, you're you able to replace tooth structure with a natural looking um, fabric that will look like natural teeth. So when somebody smiles, somebody would say, their friends and family would say to them, oh, my God, you have such a beautiful smile, rather than, oh, my God, you just had your teeth done. You know, you can't really tell. When you do course of veneers, they're very natural looking. And he was the first one to bring it into dentistry. He really changed the way we do cosmetic dentistry. Sounds like a pioneer to me, kind of disrupted yep. the market. You know, we yep. talk about everybody comes up, a lot of Jeff Bezos on the show, Steve Jobs, obviously, but how they changed the game, it sounds like he did as well. Yes. So now we're looking at, a great practice that you and Steven have built. Let's look into the future a bit. I know there's still some more for you to accomplish because I know you well. What would you say you're looking at in one year and five years? One year from today, how are you hoping your entrepreneurial endeavors have evolved? I think one year from today in our dental practice, we're going to be completely digital. And we don't even take impressions anymore with that gooey stuff going down your throat. We do everything digitally. And it's so much more precise. It's all computer driven. And it's wonderful. Now we're getting into 3D printing where we're printing our own models. We can make our own retainers. Wow. Yeah. And um, we do a lot of dentistry within the practice. And when you're dealing with computers versus somebody doing it, you know, it's so much more precise, especially, you know, also the patients used to hate taking impressions when the gooey stuff would go down their mouth and then they would <laughs> gag and they'd want to rinse out. And some impressions have to stay in their mouth for seven whole minutes. So that's not easy. Now we just take a bunch of photographs digitally and it gets downloaded to the laboratory. We make a model, we make the porcelain and it comes out beautiful and the restorations drop right in, no adjustments. That's amazing. So now let's look even further, Deb. Five years. What are we saying? Five years. I just um, know that I'm going to enjoy my practice every day even more. You know, at that point, I'll be in dentistry over 50 years. I really can't see myself retiring because I really do enjoy what I do. And um, I just would be very specific on the patients that I would treat. I want patients that, um, you know, are happy and that, you know, appreciate what we do and that, um, and that we can see the change in their life. You know, when you know you're changing somebody's life when every day when they look in the mirror, every day when they eat, when they when they chew, when they smile, when a woman puts on lipstick, when she puts on makeup, every day she's going to be looking in the mirror at her smile. And um, it's just very gratifying to me to know that I'm part of their positive change in their life. But Deb, for the listeners who don't know you, I want to brag a little bit for you. Talk about some of the clientele you have in there. Oh, we have Brian Adams, Jennifer Hudson. We have a lot of Don Johnson. You know, we have a lot of Broadway stars and, you know, um, Cynthia Revo. She just played Harry Tubman. She's up for an Oscar. We have a lot of celebrities in the practice. But you know what? We just treat everybody like they're a celebrity. We really don't. Absolutely, um, you do. You yeah. always treated me like one. But my reason for asking that question was, what advice can you give our listeners who have aspirations to attack whatever market they're in 
to get some high-end clientele, what are some tips you can give them for maybe achieving that goal? You know, I would say keep your eye on the ball. Don't give up. You know, we're all going to go through obstacles no matter how, no matter how old you are, no matter how much you've tried. You know, we all go through negativity. We all go through hard times. So just pick yourself up and keep going forward. I know it sounds a little bit like a cliche, but it's true. You know, it and is, you have to yeah. Have positive, yeah, you have to have positive people around you, a good support system. And I think, you know, as you get older, I'm 58. So as you get older and you get into your 40s and 50s, you realize who your friends are, who your dear friends are, who, who would be there for you when you're down and out. You know, the real friends who would be there for you at three o'clock in the morning, you know, when you really needed somebody. And that's the most important thing is to have those good people around you and just cut out the negative people, cut out the negativity around you. And always strive, I always say strive for excellence, not perfection, because you'll drive yourself crazy. Nothing's perfect. And that's but, true. <laughs> um, you know, always strive for um, excellence. And accept where you are and set your goals. I like to write my goals down and I look at them every day. And I think that when you do write things down and you look at them every day, you really do achieve them. There's a very high um, percent achieve their goals when you focus on them and you kind of get small steps in order to reach that goal. You know, when you look at a goal, it might be a huge goal, but if you break it down, you say, okay, I'm going to do these 20 steps to get there. You just go one to another and you do, you get there. There's no reason why you shouldn't. I couldn't agree more. Thanks so much, Deb, for coming on today. I know our listeners are going to see all the value in your episode. I personally enjoyed how you gave credit to the people around you. A lot of times people think they can do it all on their own, which they can to an extent, but I've learned that I can't be great at everything and there's some things I need help with and it's good to have people encouraging you all around. So I do appreciate that answer. But it's time for the last word. Is there something you'd like to share with everybody listening in that we didn't touch on today? I would say do things that make you happy. Love do do self-care. Care about yourself, number one. And when you're happy, you zoo that happiness onto others. And, um, and you just, you know, you enjoy your life. Absolutely. Would you mind sharing the social media website or ways for our listeners to get in touch with you, use your services, check out your practice online? Yeah, online we're glassmandentalcare.com and on Instagram we're Glassman Dental. Great. Everybody be sure to check those out. And if you're looking for a dentist in New York City, couldn't recommend better people to help you out. Be sure to follow the show on Instagram and Facebook at your favorite morning podcast and on Twitter at Podcast by Lancey. My handles are at Vincent A. Lancy on all social media and YouTube, and my website is vincentalancy.com. Be sure to check out my book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption, on Amazon now, but be sure to DM me or email me. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed today's episode, please continue listening and rate what it's really like to be an entrepreneur five stars. I work very hard to find value delivering stories for you on each episode. As always, I will end the show and follow the last word with a quote that inspired me, and I know it will for you too. This one is from Jessica Heron, CEO and founder of Stella and Dot. She said, you have to see failure as the beginning and the middle, but never entertain it as an end. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all in the next episode of what it's really like to be an entrepreneur.